Hello, my name is Brian Orham from Sawtooth Software, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the new willingness to pay features within Sawtooth Software's Market Simulator. So I've got the Market Simulator open right now, and I want to tell you a little bit about this study that we have, this conjugate analysis study. When I click on Attribute Info, you can see that the attributes are shown. This was a study done back in the 1990s involving choice of television sets for the home. One of our attributes, importantly for willingness to pay, is the price attribute. It ran from $300 to $450, and I have previously set up values associated with those levels of $300 associated with $300 and $450 with $450, so that when we estimate willingness to pay, that the features are scaled on the proper dollars. We click that it is a continuous variable and that this attribute price is the price attribute. So that's our setup in terms of our attributes and levels in the Sati Software Market Simulator. Now then, how do we do willingness to pay? We create a simulation scenario and willingness to pay is going to be estimated with respect to this, uh, this uh, simulation scenario. I'm going to start out by showing how by clicking add and clicking this flyout dropdown that I can choose the create willingness to pay scenario, which shortcuts this for you by doing a lot of the work for you. It has a wizard that creates a scenario for you using the attributes that you want to estimate willingness to pay for, and I'll assume all the attributes, and a rich set of competitors. By default, the software wants to do five, and that in our experience, is probably about enough to be able to estimate good willingness to pay. So we'll keep that at five. When we click Finish, then the software automatically adds a simulation scenario with your product for which willingness to pay is going to be estimated, and that's represented on the first row, and five different competitors. Notice that by default, we start with these range instructions. Range instructions allow you to specify for brand, for example, that our product can take on all potential brands. Now, that might not necessarily be realistic, but for the sampling of scenarios approach, which assumes a generalized willingness to pay estimation, that's what it's going to do. I'm going to show how we can change that in a little bit. But for each of the attributes, the range instruction tells the software that we're going to be using all of the levels from level one all the way to level three, and in prices from level $300 all the way up to $450 when estimating willingness to pay. Now then, I'm going to click on the My Willingness to Pay Scenario Settings. And by default, we want to use the Share of Preference Simulation method. This approach goes much faster than the randomized first choice, which is typically the default. But for willingness to pay scenarios and estimating willingness to pay, we recommend using the faster Share of Preference approach rather than randomized first choice. The range behavior, that means when the software encounters a range instruction, what should it do? We have added the willingness to pay as a range instruction, as a range option to tell the software that we're not going to be doing sensitivity analysis, we're not going to be doing search, we're going to be doing willingness to pay across the attribute levels of the range function. So we make sure that that is willingness to pay. There are some settings that we can click by clicking this gear icon on the willingness to pay settings. First, let's talk about sampling. When we're using sampling of scenarios with the willingness, with the willingness to pay and these range instructions, we are going to be randomly picking a thousand scenarios involving our product specification and the competitor's product specifications. We're going to be estimating willingness to pay for all thousand of those random specifications, which incorporate all potential uh, competitive reactions, the ways that they can position themselves either rationally or irrationally in response to what we do with our product. That's going to take um, a number of minutes to estimate. So to keep things quick for this example, I'm going to crank down the number of competitive set draws to just five instead of a thousand. I'm not going to talk about bootstrap sampling just yet, but I'll come back to it. Of course, when we estimate willingness to pay, 
we need to estimate willingness to pay with respect to a reference level. One level is pegged as the reference, and the other levels we estimate willingness to pay with respect to the reference level. By default, the software picks the levels that are the lowest preferred levels, the lowest utility levels as the reference levels. But I could change those reference, reference levels right here. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK and kick over these five random draws of sampling of scenarios, both for my product and for the competitors. And for each of those five, it's going to estimate willingness to pay for each level in the experiment versus relative to the reference level. I click Simulate. It does just five of those simulations, and it gives us a willingness to pay report. First off, we get a little warning saying, hey, we had some extrapolation involved in some of our analysis, and we'll see where that happens below. We have 352 respondents, and we can see for brand that JVC must have been the lowest utility brand, and that becomes the reference level. RCA has a willingness to pay for this sample of 352 respondents of $51 versus JVC, and Sony a little bit more. We can go down in our report, and aha, we find the situation where we did end up doing some extrapolation. Now the software warns you that, hey, to be able to drive the price back, to be able to drive the share back for the enhanced product when it was surround sound, I had to go beyond $450 sometimes and extrapolate. I've still given you a result, but you might want to interpret that with caution. And it tells you that 20% of the sampling draws, one of the five sampling draws that we did of potential uh, competitors versus our product involved having to extrapolate beyond $450 to drive the share of preference back down for the surround sound enhancement. So we'll interpret that with some caution. But the other attribute levels, um, we don't have any uh, extrapolation and bl channel blockout, for example, people are willing to pay $42 for that enhancement to the television screen for us compared to competitors. And the none, notice that we have this none box checked. And if we have none in the study, then respondents can also be allowed to pick none and not be forced to be able to, to pick something in uh, the simulation scenario. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the flexibility of what we can do with the sampling of scenarios approach. We can say, for example, that we are um, Sony. Let's imagine that we are Sony. Therefore, we know that we don't have to randomly draw through sampling of scenarios different brands for ourselves. We want to estimate willingness to pay assuming we are Sony because the willingness to pay for features can depend upon the brand name associated with it. We know in this particular data set that the respondents that tend to favor Sony are also those respondents that tend to be a little bit less price sensitive. So willingness to pay for features on a Sony is probably enhanced relative to the other two brands. But we know that the other two brands can therefore be either levels one or two. So we're going to change these range functions to say, hey, the competitors can only take on levels one or two. Now, we have enhanced our willingness to pay scenario, our sampling of scenarios, to peg our brand name to Sony, but allow the other competitors to be one of the other two brands, but not Sony. Now, when we estimate willingness to pay again, we're going to get a little bit different result because now we have put some restrictions, some focused restrictions on what the sampling of scenarios can do. Now we see that um, again, we have some extrapolation on surround sound, but channel blockout now is worth $60 when attached to our brand. Now, with hundreds of sampling of scenarios, we're gonna get our numbers to converge better. So these numbers aren't quite converged, they're only based on five sampling of scenarios. But when you do this for real, you'd be doing hundreds or potentially that default thousand draws of scenarios to stabilize the results. Let's do another modification to show you the power and flexibility of sampling of scenarios. Let's assume that we have a patent on channel blockout and that no, no other competitors can take on channel blockout. So we're going to keep the range instruction to say, hey, we can either not have channel blockout or we can have channel blockout and we want to estimate the willingness to pay for that. But let's say that the competitors are going to be forced 
to not be able to provide channel blockout. We have a patent on it. Now let's go ahead and estimate the willingness to pay. We click, click simulate. It runs the five scenarios again. This time we are Sony and we have a patent on channel blockout. We go down to channel blockout and it's now worth $108. The willingness to pay is $108 now because uh, buyers can't get it in any other way. The competitors could never offer it. We have the patent and the willingness to pay goes up because we exclusively offer it. We have the monopoly. Okay, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about bootstrap sampling to be able to get confidence intervals. Okay, it's $108, but what's the confidence interval? The 95% confidence interval can be calculated if we go ahead and turn on what we call bootstrap sampling. Now in bootstrap sampling, we essentially have two loops in sampling of scenarios. We are going to sample with replacement respondents over and over again to pick a new data set each time, which has a subset or sometimes respondents duplicated for bootstrap sampling, a new data set each time. And then within each of those bootstrap samplings, we are going to have a sub loop where we loop over how many competitive sets to draw within that bootstrap sample. To keep things going quickly, we're going to go ahead and tune this way down. We're going to go ahead and say that we're just going to do five competitive sets per sample. And instead of the default 300 bootstrap samples, to keep things running a little bit quicker for this demonstration for you, and not quite as precise as the defaults, we're going to say that we're just going to use 30 bootstrap samples to develop our confidence intervals. I click OK, and then I click Simulate. OK. After a few minutes, I get my result, and here's what I see. The simulator adds three new columns to the report, the standard error, and the lower and the upper confidence intervals. In this case, I set it that I wanted to have 90% confidence intervals. If I wanted to change that, I would go over here to the Home tab, and I would pick a different confidence interval, like 95% or 90 or so forth. But I did a upper and lower 90% confidence intervals. And you can see that, for example, 26 inch screen has a mean of 37 and the lower and upper confidence intervals range from 30 to 45. Well, this is a brief introduction to how this works, willingness to pay with Insati Software Simulator. We have additional instructions in the manual, in the, in the software help that will help you along. And of course, you can always call our technical support line.